Oh dear uh, people of God, my precious brothers and sisters. Uh, this is woman of God, um, Raksham. Today I have come here to uh, share with you um, something that the Lord uh, has been, you know, putting in my spirit so strongly. It's about um, praying without ceasing, praying continually. We, as the body of Christ, we as the believers of Christ, it's our duty, responsibility to pray because the Lord said it. Jesus himself said it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17. Pray continually. Pray without ceasing. Are we praying? Are we saying how much to pray? How many years to pray? There is no end for it. As long as breath is in your lungs, you need to keep on praying. Till your last breath, till you return to Christ. Don't give up. There may be certain prayers you have been praying, you have been waiting, answer maybe for 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. Don't give up. And make sure your prayers are aligned with the will of God and, and not with the selfish motives. Your prayers should not be demonic. It should not be outside the will of God. It should not be coming out of your flesh. Make sure your prayers are inside the will of God and make scriptural prayers. Take the Bible, open the word of God, take the scripture promises, use it as your prayer baseline and pray using the scriptures. And pray. Most of you do not pray. Servants of God must pray, must have a committed prayer life. Not only servants of God. Believers of Christ must have committed prayer life, whether you are a woman or whether you are a man, whether you are a businessman or you are a doctor or a teacher or a lecturer, whoever you are, or whether you are a homemaker, whether you are a mother of five kids or an entrepreneur, have your own business at your home or at the uh, separate outlet, whatever it may be, it must be a very important integral part of your life. You do not forget or you do not just neglect prayer. You do not stop eating, right? Thrice a day you eat. You eat your breakfast, have your lunch and have your dinner and snacks in between. You take bath every day. You clean your house every day. All of your routines you do. But when it comes to prayer, you have an excuse. That I am not keeping well. My mental health is not fine. My life is not good. I have a lot of problems. Regardless of anything, you must pray. When you pray, situation will change. Even if it doesn't change for some reason. God may be trying to change you. To make you a prayer warrior. To make you grow in faith. To make you grow in faith. To make you walk in the perseverance and endurance. He may be teaching you to walk in faith. That's why some prayers take a long time, for 10 years. But by then, by you reach 10 years, you would have grown in so much faith. So waiting, waiting in the presence of the Lord in prayer develops endurance and perseverance. And out of this endurance and great perseverance comes out great faith. Don't stop praying, believers of Christ. You may be a newborn believer, born again Christian. But do not stop praying. Do not kick prayer out of your life. You have not stopped eating your food. Every day you eat your breakfast. Whether your mood is fine or not fine. Whether your health is fine or not fine. Whether, whether your husband is fine with you or not fine. Whether you have job or you do not have job. All the seasons, whether it is summer or winter, you do not stop eating. You do not stop shopping. You do not stop buying things. No, you do not stop uh, doing um, your routines of uh, cleaning the house, taking a bath. Then how come uh, prayer life, you have put the prayer life last. Some people have put it out of their life. Prayer doesn't have to be filled with terminologies. You can pray. You can pray anyhow. But you also pray all the time. When you are in distress, when you are in joyful situations, when you are you're going through you know hard situation, when life is easy, pray. When you are joyful, give thanks to God. Pray, pray is not just in you know, five minutes. 
and saying, you know, praying and five minutes and just getting up, you know. Have a committed prayer life. Do you have family prayer life? Do you have family life, family prayer life? You must have personal prayer life. You must have committed personal prayer life, family prayer life, fasting prayer, weekly once at least fast and pray. Pray for your pastors, believers of Christ, all the believers, whoever is your spiritual leader, a spiritual mother or father, pray for them. Because the attack they face is so much. You have to cover them in your prayers. Not only they are praying for you. Because they are praying for you and for all other things. So many things. They have been attacked by the devil. So it is your responsibility. Being their spiritual children. Need to cover them in your prayers. You need to pray for yourself. That is how Jesus taught us how to pray. He prayed for others. He prayed for himself. He prayed for everyone. He prayed for the world. He prayed for all the matters. You need to imitate Christ. You need to follow Christ. And you are calling yourself a believer of Christ. And if you do not follow Christ in terms of prayer in other things. You are not justifying what you are saying by calling yourself a believer. Pray. Study the word. How many years opened your Bible? How many years have been over? Over. Open your Bible. Study the word of God. Meditate. Walk in the word of God. Praise. Give praise to God. Thanks to Jesus. Worshipping God. Praising God. And uh, meditating the word of God daily. Studying the word of God. Like chapter by chapter and meditating. The meditating the words. Maintaining the journal. Whatever God speaks to you. Write it. Hold on to the promise. You need the word of God and prayer. These three things must be in your life. It, it is not just enough that you just pray and there is no Bible, Bible reading, Bible meditating, studying the scriptures and no worshipping. No. Three must go hand in hand in every believer's life. You must pray. When you are going through a hard situation, you can seek the help of prayers from servants of God, from your spiritual leaders, from other pastors. But are you praying? When your situation is gone, not good, are you kneeling down before God? Are you bringing that request before God? 